Well, hello there again, everybody. So great to see all of you that are joining me for the Arabella Block of the Month Quilt Along. I'm having a blast. We're on month three. I've got the instructions you need. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody to yet another wonderful tutorial presented by Stitch in Heaven. We are doing the block of the month called Arabella by Wing and a Prayer Design. And this has been super fun for me. Not only are the um, awesome batiks designed by Wing and a Prayer Design super fun and beautiful to work with, but if you don't remember from Lesson one, month one, his good old Rob's trying to slow down and practice more of a passion for precision. I've got my Team Tiffany Hayes shirt on. And I have to say, folks, I'm a little disappointed as it hasn't worked much yet, but the quilt is still coming along swimmingly. I'm having a blast. We're making four of these blocks today. These are called the V-Star blocks, and I've got three of them so I could have a head start, practice what I'm going to be teaching here. And I actually found a couple of great tricks, especially when it comes to the assembly. So stick with me till the end of the video. Uh, oh, and please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that we can continue to help grow and promote all of these kinds of wonderful fun videos. And as a uh, third week request for me today, please, before we start sewing is, um, I'm really enjoying the block of the month. I've had a few suggestions from a few of you, but let me know in the comments today, which block of the month program from Stitch in Heaven you would like to see yours truly quilting with all of you month by month again next. So let me know which ones you're interested in and I'll see what I can do to talk the boss lady into letting me do another one with you. Okay, let's get diving in. Block three, um, I've got my full color instructions here and in case I get going too fast, uh, as I often do, sorry, caffeinated quilter, I want to talk about, I've got four different rulers that we're going to be using today. So we've got the creative grids, the two peaks in one ruler, and this is used for making these V star blocks. And this is kind of the, uh, excuse me, the V block, which is the key to this star. And that's going to be really awesome. We're going to make eight of those. Uh, we're going to trim them down uh, to four and a half inches square. So at least something that's square bigger than four and a half or five inches. This happens to be a six. I love it. My favorite ruler possibly of all time is it's a two and a half inch by six and a half. But when we get into making our checkerboardy half square trying uh, checkerboardy um, four patches, this is amazing. And then I have my well loved and used um, slotted trimmer today because we'll be making half square triangles as well. So at any rate, I wanted to mention those because sometimes I forget to tell you all what I'm using. And I apologize. Um, I'm working out of the uncut kit from Stitch in Heaven using, like I said, the Wing and a Prayer batiks. And in our instructions, right, we have both our basic cutting instructions, which teach you how to make the different block units. So make sure you have those handy to refer to, and we'll be using several of them today. But more importantly, as we read through the pattern, here's our finished in gray scale design. Here's how it's going to be assembled. Here's our cutting instructions, folks. And with these cutting instructions here, they're pretty standard, but there was one thing that caught my eye and I had to stop and think about it. So when we come down in here to fabric number eight, our second set of instructions says from the leftover width of fabric, strip above. So our first cut was a four and a half inch by this width of the fabric. Those are the strips that are used, like you see here, for cutting down the edges of the tall uh, triangles. So as a reminder, with this particular ruler, there's a couple of really cool things, but sometimes we get a little bit confused if we're going too fast. So you can see here, we're just gonna line up in the oval, it says four and a half inch strip. This here is the four and a half inch strip. And if you look at your instructions here, it will telling you that you're using the base fabric three and or seven and your sides are the fabrics eight and nine. This here happens to be fabric eight. So let me show you one of those cuts lining up that bottom on the appropriate number. Now what happens is once I cut through here, folks, there's a really cool little notch I want you to cut off. And of course, at the moment, I wish I had my Martelli mat out, which I don't know why I don't, <laughs> sorry. Um, but at any rate, so once that little notch is cut off, that will really help us align later. The reason that was important is you're gonna have, uh, it, 
this much at least left over uh, if you're cutting down yourselves. And so now what we need to do to catch up later on is create in the second cutting instruction, the three and a quarter inch uh, square. So we're gonna um, need to make three and a quarter inch squares out of that. And so again, what I like to do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a square ruler. I'm gonna find a three and a quarter, slide down to three and a quarter. So I'm lining up my edges here so that really with one cut and another cut, I can make a square but you need to make more than just one. So I recommend with your scrap, once you confirm that you have all 16 pieces here, go ahead and cut yourself a three and a quarter inch strip, whittle it down into squares. That's the easiest way to handle it if you did not know already. That doesn't look very square to me, folks. I'm a little nervous at the moment. Let me double check that. All right, so I've got, uh, oh, that was three, one, two, three and a quarter that way. Uh-oh, but what I did, I went the wrong direction, which is not terrible because I have extra, but I better dash and grab that square. I'll be right back. And no worries, crisis averted, and thank goodness, I have noticed this with all of my cut your own kit from Stitch in Heaven as I've had extra in each and every month. So anyways, here we go, we're moving forward. Three and a quarter inch square, which means all three. Four sides are three and a quarter inches. And we're gonna now need to set that just aside later on, paired up with fabric number five when we get into our half square triangles. So anyways, sorry about that little uh, goof up, but I am a regular quilter and you can't imagine how many times I do regular quilter stuff. Um, all right, let's get back to our instructions and actually build one of our V blocks here. So we're gonna basically build, let me just refer to them as a light, which has the three as the base here, and then a dark, which has the seven as the base. They both have the fabrics number, let me just confirm, nine and eight, and they're both in the same locations and you're making eight of each of these. So as I mentioned earlier, what we wanna do now is as we bring in, and I think this will be the easiest to see, reminder, we're building out squares. So that at a, at a moment can be a little challenging for, for some of us directionally challenged folks, and you're using batik, so there really isn't a wrong side, okay? So you can just kind of do what you need to do to manipulate them, but we're gonna start one piece at a time. And what I do is I find the bottom corner along the short edge of the triangle, actually the bottom edge of the triangle, or the base triangle is what we're calling it in the pattern. I hold that down, lock it in, then I'm just gonna lay my fabrics, and of course we're going for right sides together. And then you're just gonna head on over to the sewing machine. I've got an edge guide on again for my quarter inch seam allowance. And I've now dialed this in so that it's working perfect with my little heavier threads and my cuts. And a lot of the pieces are actually gonna have a build and trim method. These ones here, we're gonna have just a little to shave down to our four and a half inch squares. And as I said before, you can chain piece all of these, but what you're gonna wanna do is stop after the first half of the assembly and press. And I'm gonna press to the outside, the small triangle. And now I'm gonna come back in with the same exact method, I'm gonna line up my right sides together. I'm looking for the chopped off tip, lining it on that bottom edge. I like to hold that together as I head onto the machine, just making sure that my fabrics have lined up. And now we're gonna go ahead and stitch there through. Again, you can chain piece those and then press over And now we're gonna do the same method for both of the squares we're using. Like I said, we're gonna need a total of eight of each family. Now we wanna trim these down to four and a half inches square. And the most important part is that we have ourselves a quarter inch up at the top so that we can make a nice point. I'm looking down here and I'm within my four and a half. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna square up my bottom edge. I've got my quarter inch here and I'm now gonna shave. So my first trim is across the top of the tall triangle to ensure 
easier attempt at that quarter inch peak. Okay, bottom's been squared. So now if I want to check my edges, I'm just going to see here, am I at four and a half? I really am. So I'm going to just trim, but I would also be looking if I wanted to make sure I was centered at two and a quarter. If your blocks had run long, because you're doing a little bit finer seam allowance than the quarter inch, you could trim off the edges, but just make sure that that center tip stays at two and a quarter because that's half of four and a half, trying to give us our most accurate and squared block. Okay, let's do the next one. We're gonna call it the dark one together. It's the same steps, but let's just go ahead and do it nice and quickly so you can just see all of that one more time. Checking orientation. Lining up the bottom first, then the outside edges will stitch. Press away, second side, press away again. Trim using the top tip to ensure our seam allowance. So I'm making sure I've got my quarter there and I'm making sure I'm at four and a half square across the bottom because that can adjust to make that look perfect across the top. Shave, <clears throat> check the block. It's bigger than four and a half this time. So I'm gonna move to center two and one quarter, shave, come to four and a half, four and a half, and shave off there. Okay, that's that culprit. Now that you have all eight of each color family made, go ahead and stack them in like fabric piles and set them aside. We are gonna move on to what make the four patches. And just to speed up the video a little bit, I've already stitched together our two fabric combinations, okay? So you have your color three and your color six, that's one combination. These were at one point the whole 44 inch with the fabric, right? And then the other combination we're going to use is a fabric three and a fabric seven. Now this is why I love that little two and a half inch square ruler because we're going to now make sub cuts of these. For accuracy, let's just cut one strip set at a time, okay? So now what I like to do is I like to not only watch the outside edge and the bottom edge, but the center seam allowance too. And again, the reason I love this ruler is I know it's two and a half, so I don't have to think anymore. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut, and you need four sub cuts for every block. You're making four blocks. So that means you would have had 16 of these, but again, I've got three on the wall already, and I'm just talking to burn up airtime, really. <laughs> I guess there's other things we could talk about but I wanted to make sure that you got to see me cut all of these down. Next trick, stack them in order. You didn't notice that. You're all saying, what, what, what did I not, not notice? <laughs> but did you not notice? Okay, four more, let's go. We got some quilting to do. One, two, three, and again, still watching that center line, outside line, four, Close your blades, that's what we're talking about. Always close your blades. Pretty much done with that little tool for a while. Now, these are going to make checkerboards, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just set them just as they're going to, and then what I like to do is nest them together. These are gonna be awesome for chain piecing. So just making sure that that fabric three is on opposite sides. And then by kind of wiggling and pushing those center seams together, we're gonna to get a really nice and accurate, and we are building four and a half inch square four patches. These will, should not need any trimming down if you're using a nice, accurate quarter inch seam allowance, edge guide, presser foot, something like that to help you stay accurate for sure. OK, 
Okay, so real simple. And for these, because they're not gonna be nesting to each other later, we're just gonna press to one of the fabric sides. So I guess we could probably just say, we'll press uh, to this uh, lighter green fabric side. I think that was fabric number nine. Because these units are now also completed. We just have one more unit to build, something we've done many a times together. Unless this is your first video and welcome. I'm glad to have you out there. But we're gonna make our half square triangles. Again, for organization folks, just stack these up so that all of the colors are in the same orientation because that's also gonna be helpful in a few minutes as we build out our block together. Okay, so we're gonna have two combinations of half square triangles, fabric seven and fabric five. Okay, and we're gonna have fabric um, five and fabric uh, seven again. Okay, so again, what I need to do though, is I need to mark some diagonal lines. We're gonna use those as, uh, so each one of these blocks will make two half square triangles. So this will be a guideline for sewing today. So first I'm lining up my fabrics, looking for the one that's gonna be easiest to mark. You can use that larger square, that two and a half, anything that's bigger and then go ahead and make yourself kind of a nice little chalk line. Now these half square triangles happen to have a lot of grace in them, meaning that we're gonna trim these way down. So you can really use this as a practice if you've never done this before. But now what we need to do is we need to swing the edge guide just out of the way for a few minutes. We're gonna use that chalk line as a sewing line. And we're gonna just stitch down one side. And again, you can do this with all of them in the instructions and both color families. So down the other. Once all of the first rows of stitching are completed, again, you're just gonna cut all of the squares free, rotate them and come back in and sew on the opposite side of that chalk line. Okay, once those are cut down, you can use that same ruler you drew with to cut them apart. You're simply gonna slice them. I prefer the slotted trimmer. So right now I'm gonna trim again before I press. Some of you might like block lock tools, so you would be then pressing before you trim. But nonetheless, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my slotted trimmer and I'm gonna put my two and a half inch mark just on the upper side into the triangle of the thread. It's getting me a little bit larger just a, a threads larger, actually, half square triangle. And folks, you know when I'm going fast, I just actually use my trimming skills after years of quilting skills to just go ahead and take care of those dog ears. I love the way this ruler works, but I sometimes struggle, especially when trying to talk, teach, and um, cut at the same time for all of you to get my, I like this big heavy cutter, but it's kind of scary to get into those little slots if I'm moving like I am on camera. So anyways, forgive me for not using it perfectly, but I do absolutely love it. So these are being trimmed down to two and a half. So if I didn't say that a second ago, two and a half is the number you're looking for. And we're gonna turn around, press these all over to that same fabric, right? They all hold the common fabric. So we can do that so we can nest them together because these are gonna build our centers here in just a second. This is the key to what looked at first to me to be like a square in a square, but it's really an hourglass block. So again, this is that common fabric. Go ahead, hold it in the air. Set your iron on top of it. Let the wool mat do the work for you as it absorbs that heat and holds it, kind of locks in that thread real nice. I can't believe I didn't use one of these before. It's crazy, I love it. Okay, now. We've completed these, and this is really gonna be kind of the key to building the beginning of the entire block unit. It goes right here. 
And all we really need to do is make all four of them in the same orientation. And believe it or not, I suggest you follow the instructions, right? So at any rate, here's that polka dotty fabric, real easy to find. I love the way they did this in the instructions here. Okay, so that's gonna be, and that's the, my, um, I'm just gonna call it my purple for right now. Okay, so that's gonna go just like this and just like this. Use your matching fabric, that kind of tiger looking print right now, to go around the outside to confirm you've built what looks to be a square in a square or an hourglass block. Okay, so just confirming your orientations are correct. Now, as you know the trick that I love, once you know that that goes that route, you can rotate these, see that they all go the same way, flip them all over at once so that you can again kind of speed or chain piece these but I do suggest we get this edge guide right back where it was. And I've been putting it right on top of my quarter inch mark because I'm sewing a little scant because I'm using that heavier thread as we discussed in the first video. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do these and you do them all the same. Of course, I'm just building the last ones with you because I wanted to make sure I had educated myself. Thanks again, Tony and Jenny, for giving me four blocks at a time to work with. This is great. <laughs> okay, so now we cut those off and now I'm gonna press to the purple because I like the way it sounds. Uh, just choose any fabric for that matter. But well, again, what you're doing is you're preparing yourself for that accuracy where your fabrics and your threads and everything kind of line up in that nested or nestled seam, depending on who you're listening to. Bring these together, wiggle those seams, and go ahead and put those together again with your quarter inch seam allowance as well. Okay, at this point it's all the same, so we're just gonna press away or if you're really into accuracy, you could press this seam open because it's gonna help reduce a little bit of the bulk. You're really excited if you get your points to all line up like that. That's what we're shooting, shooting for. And now that we have our center unit of the uh, V-Star block made, let's build them all out together. Now there's a little bit of a little trickaroo coming. I didn't see it first. So this is the next part in the pattern I really want you to slow down and focus on. When you look at the stars, and I've tried to put them on the wall the way they're on the pattern, there are two of the darks and two of the lights. So the dark technically on the block, I guess is gonna be on the right hand and bottom, and the light is gonna be on the upper and the left hand sides of the blocks. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you build that in the same orientation with these centers because the way they work, they're gonna all need to work together the same, okay? So again, let's just take a moment and either look here, or if it's easier, when you look at your instructions, just come on over here to your third block, right? And now again, you can see where the dark ones line up and the light ones really line up. It's gonna be really cool the way, I think it's gonna make a circular effect in a few months for us uh, around the outside centers. So at any rate, I'm getting excited, I'm getting ahead of us all. Let's build this now following that same rotation. So again, I'm gonna pick that purple and I'm gonna put it right there and now I'm gonna take, like I said, the lights and the big part points up, out, right? Or point to point. So I've got one at the top and I've got one over here on this left-hand side for me as I'm looking down at it. Let's put in the other two. Right-hand side, bottom side, okay? So there is not necessarily a correlation between these fabrics, right? So don't use that as, as your key points. Just use your instruction as your key points. But then when you get into your blocks, there is a correlation, okay? All of these next four patches are gonna have your lighter green coming in to really add contrast to the star. So the darker ones are on the outside and the lighter ones are on the inside. So before you do any further sewing, please spot check each and every block that you've got to make sure that all of your units are in the proper orientation. And now we're gonna sew one block at a time 
at the machine so we don't get going too fast. Okay, so we're just gonna fold over the easy right sides of this one. So yeah, your V block to your four patch is a pretty much standard sewing. As a matter of fact, if you're really warming yourself up, do another one here. Now here's what we're looking for for accuracy. We're gonna to try to get these two points to line up so when we fold this over, we're making sure that our quarter inch seam tries to go through those little crosses of our threads on both sides. My friend, team Tiffany Hayes here would put a pin in there and I'm just gonna to try to eyeball it a little bit. Sorry, Tony and Jenny at Wing and a Prayer Designs. I know I'm supposed to be being more accurate but I can only go so far with this. It gives me a headache, you know what I'm saying? Accuracy wise, no, I'm kidding. I'm just trying to be a showboat here. Okay, let's cut our threads between our blocks. And again, as I mentioned earlier, important. So we're gonna slow down, we're gonna press each block. Now, as I'm at my four patches and my V blocks, I'm pressing into the V, away from the four patch into the V. Away from the four patch into the V. And there is rhyme and reason behind this because our center block we're gonna press from the center out into the V. This will help us line up our rows here in just a second. But first we need to sew on the other side of the blocks. If I can brag for a second, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. <laughs> and let me stop bragging and put it back together correct first. All right, so we know that one's gonna go there. We mentioned earlier that the darks are here, so that's lining up correctly. Lights, Okay, so we're back on target. So once again, I'm just gonna fold over here. I like to rotate my fabric so that I have the bulk here on the feed dogs. The feed dogs do a majority of the work for us. No longer, hey, never really was scared of that seam. So let's just go ahead and get to it. Do your best to get that thread through that cross there. I think we got it again, pretty good. Okay, and then our last one. And do the same style of pressing. So from the four patches into the V blocks. And from the center hourglass out into the v-block okay do we have it right let's just check our pattern one last time got my greens in there i've got my dark here glad i checked folks because my greens were still lining up but the darks may not have and that might have thrown off that center for later on so always double checking at this point right and again i really uh have enjoyed working through this pattern i don't know if you remember but i got to spend some time uh speaking directly to tony one of the designers at wing and a prayer and she gave me a bunch of these tips and tricks and told me why everybody loved their block of the month so much and i apologize i'm kind of late to the party here folks we have another one coming up that's called wind song i believe it's another beautiful batik based block of the month by wing and a prayer designs and i believe it's already sold out i'm sorry i forgot to get you all knowledgeable about it but coming up in August of 2024 is the next one we still have spots in and it's called Tonga Canyon. And it's really a wonderful, rich, kind of earthy palette and it's gonna be gorgeous. And um, in speaking to Tony, a lot of the tricks that we're learning here, a lot of the methods that we're learning here kind of carry over and carry on. And I guess that's why so many of you have become such big fans of the Wing and a Prayer Block of the Months anyway. So if you would like, I believe the registration is just now opening up for the Tonga Canyon. That's August 2024.
that one will start shipping out. So there's still time to get involved. And again, of course, if you did not get your kit from us here at Stitch in Heaven, and the instructions may be a little bit different than what you're working through, or fabric's different than what you're working through, well, I'm so excited you're joining us for at least the instructions. Uh, I've, I've, I was really excited to hear so many of you um, found the video a couple months ago and just started participating. That's awesome. And uh, so if you want to do Tonga Canyon with us, maybe consider grabbing your kit with us and it should be beautiful. All right, so folks, last seam, here we go. We're just gonna put that together. You can tell I was feeling bad about not telling you about wind song, huh? Sorry. Well, and the other thing is, and selfish, this is selfish of me, folks, but I love doing these block of the months because it really gives me something good content-wise to build. We don't have to have a quilt every week done, but man, I certainly enjoyed preparing for today's video. I enjoyed taking my time, slowing down, and then thinking about with each of these blocks, because I didn't write the pattern, what can I really make sure I'm sharing with you? What can I really make sure that I found helpful? And I really did find, folks, I got most confused in reading that leftover cut, and I had to cut down to prove to all of us that it would really work so that you knew you could trust us here at Stitch in Heaven on our Block of the Month headquarters. So I think I talked just long enough to get you through yet another beautiful block. Like I said, we're making four of these in month three, the V star block. It is awesome. Uh, I'm going to look at my pattern one more time to make sure that I've got my darks and my lights in the right spot as I add it to the design wall here, folks. Super excited to have all of you here with me and want to remind you again in the comments, please let me know which other block of the month that you're excited about and you would encourage me to uh, talk to Boston to letting me uh, quilt along with all of the rest of you. Folks, thanks again for being here. It's great to see you. We'll see you for Arabella number four in a month from now. Until then, enjoy the rest of the awesome free tutorials and live videos right here at Stitch in Heaven on YouTube. Until then, please. Stay well. Oh, and, and you can try to be passionate about precision too, but the shirts aren't working. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.